Toyota Motor Corporation will refocus DEI program and hold sponsorship of LGBTQ events, citing a highly politicized discussion around corporate commitments to diversity, equity, and inclusion. The Japanese carmaker told employees it will also end participation in notable rankings by LGBTQ advocacy groups, the Human Rights Campaign, and other corporate culture surveys. The company will narrow our community activities to align with STEM education and workforce readiness. The note comes weeks after an anti-DEI activist, Robbie Starbuck, started a social media campaign against the company calling for customer boycotts because of its support for LGBTQ events and other initiatives. Toyota stated that at the time that the LGBTQ programs targeted were led by employee groups and not the company directly. A spokesperson for the company on Thursday stated that Starbucks' public attack drew a few hundred queries from employees' questions from a small population of dealers and about 30 customer calls to its call center. He described the impact as negligible. Toyota is among a handful of companies Starbucks has targeted in recent months for their work policies. Harley-Davidson Inc., Lowe's, and Ford Motors stated that they would curb their DEI efforts, including scaling back programs directed at LGBTQ groups. Ford and farm goods retailer Tractor Supply Co. are among companies that pulled out of the HRC rankings. The HRC, in recent weeks, has cautioned companies against backtracking on LGBTQ efforts and urged supporters to boycott many of their companies that have ended partnership in its corporate equity index. Quote, short-sighted decisions to abandon DEI initiative will have a lasting negative impact on business success in a future where more people than ever are identifying as LGBTQ+. Starbucks fights against corporate DEI programs is the latest in conservative-led programs that was emboldened by the United States Supreme Court's decision to ban affirmative action in college administrations last year. That ruling sparked a series of lawsuits and complaints against companies for discriminating against white workers. A 19-year-old man convicted in the fatal shootings of three young men found dead along a path in Indianapolis was sentenced Friday to 189 years in prison. A Marion County judge sentenced Caden Smith about a month after a jury convicted the Indianapolis man of three counts of murder and of the charges including robbery and dangerous possession of a firearm. Smith was 16 in October of 2021 when a police officer found Joseph Thomas, age 18, Michael James, age 22, and Abdullah Mubarak, age 17, on a pathway lined by tall grass on Indianapolis's south side. The Marion County Prosecutor's Office stated after Smith's conviction that he was identified as a suspect through his communications with the victims prior to the incident. Investigators learned Smith had taken the victims to an area where they were shot to demonstrate a gun's conversion device known as a Glock switch that can be a semi-automatic fired weapon like a machine gun. When Smith was arrested, investigators found the murder weapon in his residence. Prosecutor Ryan Mears stated Friday that justice was served for Abdullah, Joseph, Michael, and their families. This significant sentence is a testament to our commitment to holding violent individuals accountable for their actions. 68 members and associates of the Los Angeles-based W.S. Street Gang have been indicted in a federal racketeering case alleging years of drug trafficking, firearm possession, and fraud. 29 of the 68 defendants, some with nicknames such as Monster Berserker, Sinister, Meat, and Scump, were arrested on Wednesday. They face a slew of charges including conspiracy to distribute controlled substances, distribution of controlled substances, bank fraud, conspiracy to commit bank fraud, aggravated identity theft, possession of a firearm, in the furtherance of a drug trafficking crime, unlawful possession of a firearm and ammunition by a felon and possession of 
15 or more unauthorized access devices. These cases carry a statutory maximum life sentence in federal prison. The details from the Racketeering Influenced and Corruption Organization or RICO Act conspiracy, the same tool used to crack down on organized crime in the 1970s, target the so-called WS gang based in the suburban San Fernandino Valley area of Los Angeles. They got their name from a derogatory term used for white people. The gang is allied with the Aryan Brotherhood, a neo-Nazi prison gang, and the Mexican Mafia prison gang, which controls most Latino street gangs in California. The United States Attorney, Martin Estrada, called the P-Woods a grave menace to the community, quote, by allegedly engaging in everything from drug trafficking to firearms offenses to identity theft to COVID fraud and through their alliance with the neo-Nazi prison gangs, the P-Woods are a destructive force. In prosecuting the members of the P-Woods criminal organization, our office is carrying out its mission to protect the public from the most dangerous threats. The indictment unsealed on Wednesday outlines the allegations from December 2016 to September of 2024. Authorities have stated that the P-Woods used Nazi tattoos, graffiti, and iconography to indicate their violent WS extremist ideologies. These tattoos and iconography include swastikas, the symbol 88 used by violent WS extremists as code. They mail drugs to customers and use Zelle and Cash App for their transactions. They sign fraudulent loan applications for people incarcerated in California state prisons and then collected some proceeds from the co-conspirators. In one case in April 2021, one defendant submitted an application claiming he was self-employed artist writer with a gross income of nearly $250,000 and got a loan that month for $20,833. Hey guys, um, look, I just wanted to tap in really quick. I just got this feeling, man, um, that this summer is... Uh, it's about to be a white boy summer. All right, so for the first story, we have the situation dealing with Toyota. I knew it was only going to be a matter of time before this started happening, before you will start having the drawback of a lot of these companies deciding that they want to support one thing and they figure that, hey, it's not really working out for the bottom line the way that we thought it would. And all of the incentives that we are getting is not really worth it in the long run. So again, you're going to see a lot of these companies really start to pull back over time and you will start to see veil threats from others out there stating that, oh, you know, this is going to be a mistake for you guys. If you decide to pull out of this now, you're going to live to regret it, yada, yada, yada. No, they're not um, because these car companies have been around for a very long time and they have been successful before doing any and all of this type of stuff directly out here and feeding into whatever it is that people want them to do. Again, it's a business <laughs> and they have a bottom line. They have shareholders. Uh, they have people that are on the board and they have to make sure that those people are happy at the end of the day. So that means that they have to back out of whatever agreement that they, you know, specifically had or stated. It is what it is. Everybody has their turn on the wheel. Everybody has their 15 minutes of fame. And obviously some people may have a little bit longer than 15 minutes, but inevitably that time is going to run out. The time is running short. And obviously that time is now. For the second story about the, uh, the grown man um, that decided that he wanted to show people how a weapon works. I'm just trying to figure out what survival instincts did any of these guys have where they allowed this dude to really get them like that? Like, this is the weirdest thing that I ever heard in my life. He was like, yo, man, I got this uh, this brand new doohickey. And, uh, you know, I want to show you what this doohickey can really do out here in the field. And everybody's like, yeah, sure, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll just go with you. And then um, as soon as he decided to pull out the doohickey, he decided to Alec Baldwin everybody there and just uh left evidence and i'm like so nobody thought that it was suspicious that this kid grown man orange hair and all had a weapon and wanted to show you how to use it you could have looked at youtube for this uh <laughs> you could have potentially looked at uh ig or uh 
TikTok. I mean, you could have watched the movie or something. Like I'm, I'm again. I'm just trying to figure out where were the the survival instincts. Where was, you know, the fight or flight, um, type of deal that was supposed to normally happen. Like nobody had any spider senses or anything. Like this is like I said, this is madness. This is crazy. This is this is crazy. Crazy part is they gave him 189 years uh, for doing this. Normally, if it was somebody black, it would have been like, you got like 400 years. You, you're going to be looking and living with the ancestors. That, that's that's what the system normally likes to do. Give him 400 years. We yeah. all know that he ain't going to live nowhere near that length of time, but I'm just saying, uh, I'm equal opportunist. Give him 400 years. This was premeditated. He had a plan. He sought to commit to that plan. He acted directly on that plan. He he did the do. So give him 400 years. Treat Treat him like you would treat any other black man directly out here. That's all I'm saying. That's, <laughs> that is all I'm saying. Treat him like you would any other black man directly out here when it deals with this uh, judicial system and how it's a certain rules for thee and a different set of rules for me. Ah, uh, yes. And last but not least, we got Gangland L.A. And we got this uh, W.S. type of gang directly out there, domestic terrorists. And they were just committing all types of fraudulent deeds. The amount of weapons that they had out there was crazy. The amount of weapons that they had. Um, you know, no telling what type of um, narcotics they were dealing. You know, peddling directly on the streets. Uh, taking out, you know, people within their community. Uh, their kids. Getting them hooked. You know, no telling. You know, and no t amount of telling what type of bodies that they have hidden in a variety of places. But, you know, the funniest thing is that Whenever these stories get highlighted, nobody wants to talk about it like they've talked about everything else that would detail with black people. So let's say if it was like a Black Lives Matter back during the, the height of everything, during the pandemic, it was on everybody's lips. And, you know, everybody started to admire going, that's that's that. They're a gang, they're a terrorist organization. Right. No problem. Cool. Fine. Now, equal opportunity, because I believe in equality is that the same treatment that they got, this should be the same treatment for the 68 members of this gang because this is, again, ridiculous. Because supernaturally, whenever there's a uh, black gang out there, uh, you know, it's bad, it's negative. Uh, they're terrorizing the streets, they're terrorizing the people, right? Yeah, uh, racka, racka, racka. But then when it deals with these gangs who are reflective of the majority in the United States, Magically, everybody is silent. And I mean, everybody is silent. I'm like, that's a little bit weird to me. I thought we were, you know, a um, equal country out here about equal opportunity. Right. Obviously not. Obviously not. And then looking at the list, this is looking like X-Men Days of Future Past. If you don't know anything about that comic, go pick it up and read it either digitally or physically. And you'll see the front cover and it's reflective pretty much of this. And I'm like, um, why are there still people out there on the loose? That makes no sense. These are dangerous, dangerous individuals. For the most part, the fraudulent activity where they decided to lie and say that they made 250 k for a person, and then that person was able to get a loan for about 20 k That's crazy work. That is crazy work. Why is the, now correct me if I'm wrong, because my brain might be a little bit off. But uh, where 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 are the government entities that normally go after people that commit fraud for a PPP loan? Where where are they at? Because they need to be directly on this. You need some super sleuths, you know, directly on this. You don't need John and Steve, you know, from accounting, or you know, John and Steve from you know the basement of uh the police department. We we need some some actual real people here, uh, to bring these people into accountability for the actions that they committed to because. That's taxpayer money, right? That was money that was supposed to go and help out the needy, not help out the pretending to be needy. <laughs> that's, you know, that's not what's supposed to happen. But statistically speaking, this is how this works. They are primarily the ones that can lie and fake and, you know, get the money that they just so happen to need without anybody, you know, really questioning. Now, if you have black people that tried to play the same game, which a lot of them did during the pandemic, um, they got caught real quick. <laughs> when I mean real quick, I mean real quick. And I keep trying to tell people, you're trying to play a game that it wasn't meant for you to play. And even if it wasn't meant for you to play, it wasn't meant for you to win. So no matter how you look at it, you're meant to lose. That's it. <laughs> I 
bad is that? But anyways, let me know what you guys think about this video and everything that I stated in the comment description below. And as always, peace, love, and stay tuned for the next video.